Okay, and I think my audio is back on. So yes, uh, so I'm um, I'm uh, reporting on the work that we did um, at the uh, this, which was carried out both at the research complex and at the ISIS neutron and muon source, also at the uh, Rutherford Appleton Laboratory. So oh, come on. Sorry about that, some slight uh, technical difficulties. Uh, so the methanol to hydrocarbons reaction refers to a family of chemical products from a methanol feed. This provides a route to the production of commercially valuable hydrocarbons from alternative sources such as uh, biomass rather than generating them from fossil fuels and is therefore of industrial interest. MTH reactions generally employ zeolites as solid acid catalysts um, for the conversion reactions. These are used because shape selective effects from the uh, three dimensional pore, net, uh, pore structure of the zeolite framework leads to the favoring of specific groups of hydrocarbon products. For example, this zeolite uh, that I'm demonstrating here is ZSM5, which is a medium pore zeolite with a pore structure consisting of intersecting straight and sinusoidal channels of approximately five and a half angstroms in diameter, which results in a product mixture high in gasoline range alkenes, light alkenes and aromatic molecules, all of which are, valu are valuable uh, commercial products. Uh, the MTH reaction itself is complex, but is accepted to proceed by a hydrocarbon pool mechanism. On contact with methanol at the reaction temperature, a population of hydrocarbons builds up within the zeolite and is continually cycled through multiple oligomerization, cracking, and aromatization reactions, producing a pool whose composition is determined by the catalyst's selectivity, selectivity and the reaction conditions. Portions of this pool, which are small enough to be able to diffuse through the pore network, can be released as products and the pool is regenerated by incorporating additional methanol fed into the catalyst through methylation reactions. While this mechanism is well established, there remains some degree of debate as to how exactly the pool is initially formed and the product of the reactions which generate the first initial carbon-carbon bonds within the, pool, within, the, within the forming pool. Our recent work has focused on the possibility of propene as the key intermediate in this process. Uh, and this initial protein formation has recently been observed spectroscopically, sorry, by infrared microspectroscopy uh, in some work performed at Diamond by uh, Valina Minova et al. Et al uh, here. So we wish, wish to take that forward and we are interested in exploring the uh, importance of protein to the MTH process in more detail by a comparison of the reaction chemistry of propene itself under MTH conditions to what you get uh, for um, a methanol-fed reaction under the same conditions. Since if they res this results in similar chemistry, that suggests that the propene remains a key intermediate throughout the reaction process, rather than just being significant during the initial pool formation phase. This required studying the course of the reaction over a longer time period, which does lead to some issues with the um, buildup of coke species within the zeolite and with darkening of the catalyst, which can make it a little difficult to observe the um, coke species we're interested in um, by uh, optical spectroscopic methods. Fortunately, we'd already gained some experience in the use of inelastic neutron scattering spectroscopy, which has some key advantages that make it a useful technique for examining these kinds of reactions over zeolites. So inelastic neutron sc uh, scattering is a vibrational spectroscopy technique similar to infrared or Raman methods, except that it has no selection rules. So a single INS measurement obtains the full vibrational spectrum of your sample. The intensity of the mode, vibrational modes in the final INS spectrum is determined by the, a property called the neutron cross section the atoms involved in that vibrational mode. And it happens that the framework atoms in zeolites have extremely low neutron cross sections. This means that the zeolite modes have very low intensities 
uh, and therefore the spectrum is dominated by the hydrocarbon portion of the, of the Coke catalyst sample, which is what we're interested in observing. INS therefore allows low energy vibrational characterization of Coke species in zeolites without needing to remove the zeolite framework through methods like uh, RISNET analysis and without the framework modes getting in the way of the observation. So for our study here, um, uh, oh yes, the advantage that INS does have is that it's not suitable for use as an operando technique. So all of the, all of the INS investigations were done on catalysts after they'd finished reaction. To prepare the samples which we um, examined, we re reacted propene at three different temperatures, 473, 573 and 673 Kelvin, in order to examine three different reaction regimes around the typical condition, conditions used for meth methanol to hydrocarbons reactions. The reactor was a, a, 30, a fixed bed reactor that was made relatively short and fat in order to minimize bed length effects. Uh, and the vapor phase products from the reaction were analyzed by uh, GC and micro GC analysis, while the cap contents of the catch pot and the reactive catalysts were analyzed ex situ. So we can be seen uh, from by examining the propene conversion as measured by GC analysis that the catalyst is initially highly active at all three reaction temperatures. However, while propene con conversion remains essentially 100% at the higher two reaction temperatures, at, at 473K, the catalyst undergoes premature deactivation over the course of uh, the initial of six hours on stream, which was the point at which we terminated the catalyst preparation reactions in all three cases. Um, all three reaction temperatures produce large quantities of hydrocarbon products. Uh, and it can also be seen that the catalyst is operating in a very different reaction regime in each case. In the case of the reaction at 473 Kelvin, the released products are almost exclusively saturated alkanes, with no significant levels of aromatic production as is visible in the infrared spectrum here, and the fact that the GC column here is flat, um, together with quite a large proportion of unreacted propene uh, due to the ongoing deactivation. Um, at the highest reaction temperature, the product slate is very different, with the liquid products consisting mainly of benzene, toluene, xylenes, and naphthalenes, together with light olefins in the non-condensable products. There's also a significant level of production of propane, which is quite distinct from the propene in the GC results. Overall, this product slate is quite similar to that produced by, the, uh, by methanol to hydrocarbons reactions over ZSN5, with the exception of this propane production. The reaction at 573K, as would be expected, lies between these extremes. It starts out operating quite similarly to the reaction at 673K with slightly different product ratios, but over time starts to shift towards the less aromatic, more alkane heavy product slate closer to that found at the lower temperature. This pro product uh, process isn't anywhere near completion after the reaction time that used in this instance and is still ongoing at the point where we removed the samples for ex situ analysis. So exam examining the hydrocarbons which are not released from the zeolite, we can see that some coke is produced at all three temperatures, but it's must, uh, the level of coking is much more significant at the lower reaction temperatures. The coke produced can also be separated into two types. Type one coke, which uh, oxidizes at a lower temperature uh, and which is only significant in the lowest reaction temperature uh, uh, exact, um, investigated, and um, which corresponds broadly to large oligomer chains, and type 2 coke, which is produced at all three reaction temperatures, and it corresponds to more aromatic species trapped within the zeolite. This coke buildup is reflected in the uh, porosity of the zeolites as uh, measured by gas isotherm measurements. Come on. Um, it can be seen that coke formation at the highest temperature accounts for only 2% of the final catalyst weight, which is not significant to block the, the zeolite pores to any significant degree. While the high levels of um, coke production at 473K um, 
uh, um, results in the near total blockage of the zeolite pore network, which explains the deactivation we, visit, we observed in the propene conversion data, since if the access to the pores is blocked, the propene can't access the active catalytic sites within the pore network. Uh, in terms of identifying what uh, these coke species are, infrared analysis allows us of the um, uh, coke, type 1 coke produced at 473k, allows us to identify strong alkyl modes um, at below 3000 wave numbers. And the different, a diff different spectrum shows that the uh, ZSM5 acid sites located here are being depleted by um, um, the formation of the coke species. Ah, come on. Sorry, my um, presentation appears to have frozen for whatever reason. Shit, PowerPoint's crashing. Okay. Oh. We apologize for the technical difficulties. Um, um, right, well, so uh, that means that we can identify the type 1 coke species as bo bonded alkoxides. The INS analysis allows us to identify right, allows us to identify those alkoxide species. We can see that the overall spectrum in the low energy uh, fingerprint region is quite similar to uh, uh, that of polypropene, with the exception of two additional modes located. Hello. Ah. Located here and here, which are uh, characteristic of the presence of multiple methylene um, groups in the uh, in the hydrocarbon chain uh, adjacent to one another. The um, bonded alkoxides are therefore in the form of a mix of straight and branched chains formed by oligomerization reactions. The um, with coke species does uh, contain one other component, which uh, produces the peaks identified here and here, and that is uh, in the form of cyclopentadienyl, uh, cyclopentadienyl cations, uh, which form the intermediate species in the reaction, which um, converts straight chain oligo uh, oligomer alkoxides into aromatic species over ZSM5. We, we specifically don't observe any aromatic products, but we do observe a population of pre the pre-aromatic cyclopentadienyl intermediates at this temperature. The type 2 coke species, as uh, typified by the results at 673 Kelvin here, uh, feature a, mu a much reduced level of acid site blockage and very weak aromatic CC, mo uh, CC modes. And the INS spectrum has uh, a number of similarities to the spectra of pure carbon in its various forms. We can therefore identify its composition as a amorphous carbonaceous coke buildup on the catalyst surface. And, and significantly, there's no significant levels of immobile aromatic uh, species in the type 2 coke, such as penta and hexamethyl benzenes. That's significant because it's, these species do form important coke species in methanol to hydro chemistry over ZSM5, as reported in the literature. So given these results, um, we can identify that the overall reaction mechanism for propene over ZSM5 takes the form of a dual cycle hydrocarbon pool mechanism quite similar to that observed for methanol uh, over the same catalyst, but with some important differences. Uh, at 473 Kelvin, the, uh, the, there isn't enough energy for the cyclopentadienyl intermediates formed here to con uh, undergo further conversion to produce aromatic species, and therefore the aromatic cycle of this dual cycle mechanism and that leads to the multiple oligomerizations and the form, formation of the pore blocking oligomer, which leads to the premature deactivation of the catalyst observed in the GC data. At higher temperatures, this does, uh, both cycles can contribute fully, 
leading to much longer catalytic lifetimes. Um, with the exception, and the multiple oligomerization mechanism is no longer significant, makes a significant contribution due to the increased prominence of beta scission reactions, cracking down long ligaments before they can block the, uh, block the pores. To summarize the conclusions, therefore, we've successfully used INS to characterize pore blocking coke species in, a, uh, in the reaction of uh, propene over ZSM5, which is the first time that it's been applied to the reactions of olefins in this fashion. We've confirmed that this propene conversion occurs via a dual cycle hydrocarbon pool mechanism, quite similar to uh, methanol to hydrocarbons chemistry. An analysis of the coke species by INS shows that deactivation at low temperatures is due to excessive oligomerization reactions. The high temperature coke consists of polyaromatic species with an extremely low hydrogen content and the polymethylated aromatics produced in methanol to hydrocarbons chemistry are not a significant coke species with propene feed due to a lack of a plausible methylene reaction pathway to form them. I'd like to acknowledge the uh, assistant, everyone who assisted in uh, the work reported here. Thank you for listening. And I, uh, does anyone have any questions? And I'll apologize again for the technical difficulties in the middle there. <laughs> Blame Microsoft. Yeah, can't rely on them, can you? Um, does anyone have any questions for Alex? Um, if you do, please type them in the Q&A and I will read them out. Um, I have a quick question. Of course. So, it's obviously been demonstrated to be really sort of useful in, in reactions involving zeolites and hydrocarbons. It's yeah. good at identifying things that most other techniques can't see. Can you see any other reactions that INS might be applicable to where it's not really been used yet? Um, if, if, you, if you don't have an answer to that, please, it, it's my, my naivety that's asking it. Um, I'm a little bug, Stuart. No, it's, it's <laughs> always a good idea. He, he knows his stuff, but um, it's a good question. Generally speaking, anything that's got significant levels of hydrogen in it is going to be a star candidate for INS analysis because uh, the scattering cross section of hydrogen for INS is huge. So any hydrogen, hydrogenous uh, species are always going to stand out extremely well over, over the background um, in, um, in INS based analysis. Um, it also works fairly well on uh, quite a lot of other um, catalysts. Um, I know that David's done this extensive work on using it to analyze fischer tropsch synthesis as well. And um, so, yeah, generally uh, anything with um, hydrocarbon production is a fairly good candidate. Okay, thank you. Um, does anyone have any other questions for Alex? Or did he explain everything so well that no one has any questions? Helpful. I'm not seeing anything coming in and I'm not seeing any hands raised. Um, if no one has any questions, I will move on to the next speaker. But if you think of anything pressing, if you type it into the Q&A, Alex can answer it by typing. We've got some. 